Quick reminder that the description has a link to a resource website that you can use to help contribute to ongoing Black Lives Matter organizations. You can do a myriad of things like donate to bail funds or sign petitions, all of which go a long way to fighting systemic racism. Thank you very much for your time. Hello everyone, Golden Nova here, and welcome to another episode of Plus Ones, a series where we take a single card, break down what it does, and explore what it can do. Today, we're talking about Pot of Disparity, the latest in a long line of cards meant to bolster your card economy, but at a price. For those of you who don't know, and I wouldn't blame you if you didn't, it's a very obscure card, Pot of Greed was discovered by archaeologists in the year 2002 when excavating the Legend of the Blue Eyes White Dragon booster set, and researchers have been trying to figure out what exactly it does ever since. Scientists and engineers have attempted to make their own renditions of this fabled artifact for well over a decade, and while some have come close, others have missed the mark by a staggering degree. However, recent iterations have all been excellent in their own right, but does this latest edition hold water? Let's take a look. Pot of Disparity is a normal spell that has you banishing 3 or 6 cards from your extra deck face down as cost. When it resolves, you excavate cards from the top of your deck, equal to the cards you banished face down, add one of those cards to your hand, and place the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. After it resolves, all damage your opponent takes for the rest of the turn is halved, and you can't draw any cards via card effects the turn you activate Disparity, and that restriction applies both before and after you activate it. The closest immediate comparison is their most recent cousin, Pot of Extravagance. Both have you banishing cards from your extra deck face down, and essentially lock you out of your other drawing effects for the turn. But Extravagance draws you two cards, while Disparity only gets you one, and in a vacuum, it can feel like our latest entry is futilely trying to capture lightning in a bottle once again, or in this case, a pot. However, much like how Extravagance and Desires are both different ways to draw two cards for different kinds of builds, Disparity has its own niche to fill. Let's examine them in detail more closely. The issue with running Extravagance is that it's going to shred your extra deck, and it'll do so in a way you can't control. If you rely on a series of one of extra deck monsters to get you through your combos, a single Extravagance can potentially ruin your entire game plan. And the same could be said for Desires if your main deck is similarly made of crucial one ofs Disparity gets around this by giving you control of what you banish. If you have that kind of diverse extra deck, but you have several slots dedicated to utility cards that only have situational use, you can just banish them to dig for what you need at the moment. And the variable nature of the cost means it can find a home in even the most cramped of extra decks. See, when you banish more cards for extravagance, you're essentially paying for more cards. But with Disparity, you're paying for choices. You get the same amount of cards no matter what, you just see less of them. So if you only have three to spare, it's still just an arguably less restrictive version of Pot of Duality. And that's actually another important card to bring up. Duality saw play in a ton of slower control builds around the times preceding Duelist Alliance format. I, for one, loved playing it in Bujins to help get the exact kind of card I needed to set up the Kaiser Lock. Ah, uh, those were simpler days. Now, Duality has since been eclipsed by Card of Demise as the premier choice for card draw in control decks for good reason, but both have a restriction that keeps them from seeing wider play. They both lock out special summons during the turn you activate them. Disparity has all the power of Duality to dig deep into your deck to find the exact right card you need without walling you off from more explosive lines of play. Now, if your deck needs the raw card economy that Extravagance can provide, then you'll hardly find a better card. But if you're looking for the right enabler, the key card to unlock your hand, or to make your hand even better, Disparity has the clear advantage. But that's just the first benefit. The second is timing. Extravagance can only be activated the first time you have an open game state on your turn. And it's still a strong opening play, don't get me wrong. Having 6 or 7 cards on your first turn, having dug 7 or 8 cards deep into your deck is fantastic, but all your garnets are still there. If your deck runs a multitude of cards you'd rather keep in your deck until you need them, then each one of them is like a landmine, lying in wait to ruin the draws you were hoping would bring you victory. Even other copies of Extravagance can get in your way. But Disparity completely avoids this. Not only will you never draw Disparity off of Disparity, you can also use it after you've begun to combo. If you activate effects that search, summon, or foolish cards from your deck, that decreases its size, thus increasing the odds that Disparity reveals a card you couldn't otherwise search, meaning you can find an extender to make your plays even stronger, or you find a piece of interaction or protection to help solidify your board. It can also be used to help play through disruption. If you begin your combo, and your opponent throws an Ash Blossom or an Impermanence your way, but you have something in your deck that can get you back online, you can play Disparity at that point to help you find it. There is one thing that Disparity is burdened with that other options are not, and that's the damage reduction to your opponent. And while I don't think it's a critical failure of the card, it is an important point to keep in mind when deck building. 
Now, if you're going first, this is no hindrance to anything except for burn damage, but that scenario won't be a majority of your games. If you're a going second OTK deck, and you can't easily put 16,000 points of damage on board, then it's worth considering a different draw card. If you don't have the longevity to play past turn 3, then you don't want to cut off any option that can end the game sooner for you. However, in almost every other circumstance, the damage reduction is an annoyance more than anything else. If you couldn't win the game outright, or you couldn't get to a better board state without disparity, then it doesn't really matter if your opponent has 400 life points or 4,000. But, if you can build an oppressive board to keep your opponent from getting their legs under them on their turn, then you can sweep up the rest of those life points on your next turn. And if you have the luxury, you can even wait to play it during main phase 2 so you can still do full damage. So, we've gone over the pros and cons, what's the practical application? Would any deck currently in contention benefit from a card like this more than what's currently available? Well, that's... complicated. See, I'd been framing this whole analysis around the idea of how does Disparity stack up against other Pot Of cards, but Extravagance isn't the only card using the extra deck as a resource. We also have to contend with Dogmatica. These Rise of the Duelist newcomers have been splashing everything from Eldlich to Zodiac, and they're pretty keen on extra foolishing cards like Titanoclad, Ntis, and any other utility monster they can justify running, and those usually take up the slots that we would banish for Disparity. And I certainly can't argue that effects that accomplish something are going to beat out effects that may get you a card that can accomplish something, so where Dogmatica builds are involved, I wouldn't advocate for Disparity. What about something like Virtual World? It is the kind of deck where you need to have the right mix of cards available, not just a large amount of them. And the deck does run a number of rank 6 monsters as utility, or as a way to get to Zeus. Well, currently it looks like lists are running Pot of Desires, owing to the fact that you need as many on-theme cards as possible to make the theme work. As such, the deck consists primarily of three ofs, the exact kind of deck that Desires was made for. However, this may change as time goes on. Two more cards have been confirmed for the deck, and it's currently at the limit of how many three ofs it can support. If these new cards prove to be valuable includes, as well as any potential future releases, we may see Disparity used as a way to justify using smaller amounts of unique cards, while still giving you a way to dig for your combos. Honestly, I think the best place for Disparity right now is the new up-and-comer to the format, Buster Blader. Finding a way to get to Prologue of the Destruction Swordsman is essential, and while you have several ways to do so between Buster Whelp and Trap Trick, it doesn't hurt to have more options. More successful versions of the deck are running a Dogmatica package, but it doesn't conflict here like it does in other variants, because the only two extra deck monsters you really need are Buster Dragon and Dragon Destroyer Swordsman, with the rest filling purely utilitarian roles. And if you already have all the cards you need, then you've just got a way to access some more protection for your setup. So, as it stands, I'm a big fan of Disparity, but it has to be used sparingly. It's not going to see success in every deck it's thrown into, but if you have a deck with some spare room in the extra, has bricks you'd rather avoid drawing into, and has powerful one-card starters that can fuel your game plan, you'll want to give this odd fusion of Pot of Generosity and Riches a try. But now, I want to hear what you all think. Am I expecting too much from this piece of pottery, or are we onto something here? And what decks do you plan on running it in? Let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed, please make sure to like and subscribe. If you want to help me out even more, please share this video around. If you made it this far, I hope you enjoyed, and I'm sure someone you know will too. Also, in case the community post missed you, this is probably going to be the last video I make this year. I've got a lot on my plate this December, thankfully nothing upsetting, but I don't think I'll be able to handle keeping to a schedule while balancing everything else. However, I'll be doing a bit of work behind the scenes to spruce things up, so if there's anything you'd like to see come to the channel, or any improvements you'd like to see, please feel free to give a comment about it down below. I plan to be back here on the channel on January 5th, 2021, but if you want to stay in touch till then, you can follow me on Twitter, or you can hang with me and the rest of the community on Discord. Link for all those are in the description. Once again, a huge thank you goes out to... you. At the beginning of the year, I committed to putting out videos much more frequently, and in return I've gotten to interact and hang out with all of you. Through comments, streams, and the Discord, I've been able to chat and hang out with so many wonderful people from a variety of backgrounds that I never thought I'd ever have the opportunity to do so with, so... thank you. This year was... A mess to live through, and while I never want to look back on 2020 fondly, I'm glad that at least this channel has brought me, and hopefully you, a little bit of comfort along the way. So take care for the rest of the year, don't go out Black Friday shopping, wear your masks, and if I don't talk to you until next year, have some happy holidays. I'll see you next time. Bye bye